Hello, you're listening to the Talk of Spirit Emmy Cast. My name is Andrew, and I'm joined here with Chris. Yo! Today's episode is a discussional podcast episode. We talk about the news that seems important to us, dive into our community, ask some great questions from our community members, and then say goodbye. So how has the last few weeks been, Chris? Pretty good. 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 That's a good thing. Outside of headaches, I'm I'm doing great. I always see that it seems like you always have headaches on Saturdays. Do you do something special on Saturdays, like chemicals that you're using to wash or something? I have no clue. <laughs> it's like every single time. Well, it, it, to me, it seems like it's always on Thursday, the day that we do a lot of housework. So, yeah, it could be. Could be what's causing it. Could be what's causing it. Well, that, that's, yeah, for me, it's a lot of the 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 whole pollen thing. Just, yeah. Pollen is absolutely around, crazy they, like, this year. Like, cryogenically alter the plants around here so they're like super strong pollen that tears you up i've never had that problem before until we moved here so right yeah so quite a bit to go through we, we were kind of a little bit dry as usual with our questions so uh, again i have to make a call out to people you're failing miserably i'm saddened that you guys are not supporting us with some great questions i might have to start fabricating people that are sending questions and fabric fabricate questions just to make it seem like we're still important you think so? <laughs> Might be a good idea. I, see, I, I kind of wonder if it's a thing where those that listen to us, again, usually typically people that are on the drive or they're at work and they're listening to us and they think of great questions, but they're at work or driving. So they can't don't write it down while you're driving. That's what I'm saying specifically. And so whenever it does kind of time for them to actually do the questions, they don't they don't think of it. So I'm going to assume that's the case. I'm going to give you all a slide just because I know that's probably the case, but it still hurts me. It hurts me that you guys are not giving us, or it could be that they just all have had, you know, all the questions that they can think of have been asked already. So they just yeah. ran out of questions. They've been listening to us for so long. <laughs> they don't have no more questions. At some there point you know. over like a 10 year span or whatever, <laughs> you're going to run out of questions. So I guess I understand that a little bit, a little bit. Um, yeah, I guess we could jump right into it because we have quite a bit to talk about technically with the news. There's quite a few huge parts and uh one of them is probably i'm hoping going to have some decent discussion around it uh not necessarily the thing itself but probably the idea the concept around it really is i don't want to really beat it at horse but yeah let's let's jump into it of course <laughs> the biggest debacle over the last few weeks has been anime too <laughs> so i've already created a video on this and i'm going to assume that people that again listen to us probably haven't watched my video on it because Again, those two audiences are very much separated, so I don't want to leave our podcast listeners out of the discussion, even though I made a video on it. Um, it was funny because I made a video on it, and the moment I posted it, I went to go create a thumbnail, and literally the Kickstarter was canceled, So, or not canceled, but suspended. And I'm like, well, crap, I guess I'll leave the video up, that way people have my thoughts on it at least. But um, yeah, so to give people a rundown before I pull Chris into this, because I don't know how much Chris has actually looked into this, but... Essentially, actually, I think at the beginning of last month, I think they tried to start a Kickstarter. It was by a company named Gameface LLC. I think it's a team of about five people, according to Google searching and looking at some company data. And it's all led by this guy, George Weller, I think. And they created a Kickstarter for it, went into $100,000 for this new streaming service that was trying to launch. And then they canceled it shortly after starting it. They claimed that it was on route to be funded but they canceled it and then shortly later they relaunched it with a fifty thousand dollar request on it and they hit that pretty quickly they actually got up to a hundred thousand which was the original <laughs> ask and they said they were restructuring it to kind of be more in line with the minimums that they would need in order to do this so keyword there minimum in order to launch a new streaming service a new app a AI that would a AI mascot that would talk to you or or at least reply to you, a chat system, all this stuff for fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> now they claimed that that was not including licensing fees. They said that no, the, the, to get to, to, so people know we're not doing this to get licensing fee. But, but my joke was, you're probably gonna get an app, maybe that mascot out of that fifty thousand dollars. You're not gonna get you know, servers, you're not going to get infrastructure, you're not going to get a team to maintain it, you're not going to get a hosting service that has the bandwidth required to upload m massive amounts of video streaming. And then on top of that, you're going to have to buy what they were seemingly claiming. They had a subscription model on their site that said that they had different subscription plan ideas, quote unquote, and these subscription plans went upwards of 5,000 titles, 5,000 anime titles. And again, 
you're not going to get one episode of one really crappy show for $50,000, let alone 5,000 anime titles. So, again, they were claiming they had somebody in the back that they were going to work with that was going to, you know, basically they had other... I. They were saying they had fundings from other sources, so obviously backers that were going to help them with that type of stuff, which I don't see possible. And, of course, the... The big issue that started rising, because so far from that, I'm, I'm fine. Like, creating an app, cool. I want I want uh, competition, obviously. But there's nothing behind this that makes any sense. It's not plausible. The big issue they ran into and why it came to my radar, because I, I think I've seen murmurs of it, but I didn't really give much attention to it until Sean Clector jumps up and tweets about, hey, and he basically added a whole bunch of different companies. This anime tube has our titles on the list of people they're talking to for licenses. Have any of you guys ever spoken to these people? And, of course, I think the Media Blasters and G-Kids were the two that actually applied. I'm, I'm assuming the other ones were like, wouldn't actually reply because it's it's a legal matter. Um, but the, at least those two companies were like, no, we've never talked to these people before. <laughs> and uh, they replied. Anime tube replied to Sean Collector saying, well, we sent you a message on LinkedIn. And so apparently that's their idea of in talks. And then they removed that tweet. And then later on, they came back and they tweeted to somebody else saying, well, actually, we don't have to talk to the U.S. licensors. They have it wrong. We don't need to talk to them about licensing this stuff because we talked to the actual property owner, which is technically wrong because most of these companies get exclusivities. It's like. Do you expect, uh, I think it's HBO, HBO Max has the license to G, uh, the uh, Ghibli films? Do you think they're going to pay as much as they did for that just to have it given to somebody else's too? I mean, they they pay for these licenses so that they are the one that have it so that you come to their service. They're not going to pay money for something that's like, yeah, we'll give it to anybody, but you want to pay this much? Okay, cool. Uh, well, we're going to give this person too. It's just not, again, I don't like it, but that's how it is. So... To kind of wrap it up, after this, pretty much, again, like I said, I made the video. I looked into the actual guy named George Weller. Um, apparently, he owned a company that was called Ion, uh, Ion Entertainment LLC. And Ion uh, Entertainment LLC actually has a currently available app that you can download right now. It's called Anime Tube Unlimited. And what does this pull sources from? Pirate sites. So... <laughs> That was my other thing of, like, the red flag of, okay, so they're saying they're in talks with these companies to get licenses, and then they currently have an app available that pulls from piracy sites. Not a good image. <laughs> and, of course, the worst offense of this whole entire thing is that anybody that was questioning Anime Tube and the validity of this Kickstarter, what were they doing? Blocking on every single social media site, banning people from social media sites, they were telling people on their Discord server that if they leaked any screenshots from their Discord, they would permanently ban them and possibly ban them from the actual app itself. So it's like, I mean, I know people have issues with Crunchyroll and Funimation, but at least they don't ban you for saying, hey, your app is broken. And that's exactly what they were saying. And I've seen a lot of accounts for the people that have Anime Tube Unlimited saying that they have been banned from that for uh, basically questioning them on issues with the app. So, again, all around, a lot of question marks. One main issue being the validity of the cost that it would take to in order to actually launch it. Which, again, I, I personally, I want this. I want a company that will compete. I would love for all these titles to be available on all platforms so I don't have to go to one specific platform. But the problem still lies is $50,000 is not going to even get you an app let alone licenses, let alone the ability to break exclusivity deals with companies. It's just everything was a red flag to begin from the beginning. So your thoughts, like I said, I haven't really gotten your thoughts. I, I did go ahead and watch your video on this because I, I was kind of curious as to what was going on. I It was completely outside of my my sphere, at least of things that was discussed on my my channels. Um, the, it seemed like a it, it's it's. It's kind of scary that nobody was really talking about this. Was it just that it was so abs absurd that it didn't warrant people? Because, I mean, it's 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 one of those kind of dramas. I don't want to say dramas. It, it is one of those things where it's an it's a, a happening that people just 
usually typically feed off of. And it just it was odd that nobody talked about this. I know somebody um, had replied that said that they they were afraid of legal action by speaking about this. And it's like, I mean, I understand there's a fear there, but I don't necessarily see there being a problem with pointing out something that's obviously a scam. It, but like I said, it, but I'm wondering if that's echoed by a lot of people that they had. Was there something behind George Weller or at least Game Face that they were afraid of? It's very possible. They, I mean, the the um, what is that um, where you uh, claim something uh, as claim something as defacing, true that is yeah. defacing? Yeah, and that that's very possible. That I mean, it sounds like they're trying to throw their weight around as I we're we're actually a, a true company, and and in all actuality, they're not. But I mean, there uh, there is precedent for people to do that and yeah, they're defamatory or something yeah claim it's defamatory but they and it's actually true and so it there is that legal that legal precedence to do that is, is it is it are they going to win in court probably not if they if it it actually is true then actually they're actually going to but i mean if if it weren't for the fact that right when i was host of the video um they essentially were suspended on kickstarter and then even though they said shortly after that, hey, we're looking into it, people, we're going to get it unsuspended. And then literally within a couple of hours, they were deleting all their, they were they deleted their Twitter account. Uh, he, I think he deleted his LinkedIn account. So it's like they are just kind of, you know, erasing themselves and running away, which again is another, that kind of is suspicious. Yeah. They shut down the Discord channel. So it, it is one of those things where I thought when I posted that video, I was like, I'm waiting for the moment I get a claim from them that... You know, because essentially if you do post something, you know, defamatory, mm-hmm. um, I don't think it's defamatory. It's just really pointing out the illogicalness of it. I never really said they were a scam. I said that they I it, I would tell people to remove their backing for it. But I was giving them the bit of a doubt in my video. I'm like, I want this. I'm assuming they just are just misinformed. I didn't really I did a couple times say that, yes, at worst, they could be a scam. But I think. I want to well, say I want out. to say that they are misinformed. You were just pointing out red flags. And yeah. and I think that, that that's something that we have to if if we're going to put our money into something we have to do our due diligence. And that was my fear is you have people that are backing $100,000 of people's money is on this thing and I'm concerned. And again, nobody's talking about it besides Song Collector saying and yeah, there was a lot of people on Twitter saying, you know, this is obviously a scam. But there's also the aspect of uh, stick it to the man that that a lot of people yeah. would. And, I, and I'm obviously that's why it's, it was so successful. It, the the problem with this one, and, and this is I, I, I agree. I want to see some kind of competition. The legal contracts are probably the biggest problem that it, that'll come of a lot of this. For And this is why we said. You almost have to have somebody with big pockets that that is going yeah. to take take the mantle. I that that's why we were saying it, it would be nice to see Amazon come back. Um, we have a bit or, of news on that one. <laughs> we have or, a bit of news on that one. Or uh, as much as we despise the idea of Netflix and how they do their stuff, they're they're a viable option. the 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 issue is the licensing fees. And that that is 99 percent of it, because you're talking about um, going to a company saying, hey, we're going to put your stuff out and we're going to send you royalties. OK, no problem. But we want some money up front. That's your licensing fees. This is the 99 percent of the issue. That's why Andrew was talking about the whole you're not going to get one episode for uh, fifty thousand dollars. Nevertheless, five thousand. That's a massive well, amount. Well, not talking 5,000 episodes. That's 5,000 5, series I, I that are you. 12 to 5. I'm just clarifying for everybody else. That's 12 to 500 episodes plus. It, that's a lot of money. Yeah. And and that's... I, I think Crunchyroll, I think I think if you Google it, it they show upwards of 1,000 or so. 5,000. That's a mm-hmm. lot of shows. And that, that would have been... Uh, Andrew didn't even have to give me 75% of all the information he put in that, that video. All he had to say was five thousand and five thousand shows and doing it in less than fifty thousand. I said that's a lie. There's no way. I not surface level knowledge. There's no way. 
And, then, um, and, to, and to give them some credit, that's just a subscription model. They may be hoping to get to that point, but even still, what is your catalog? On, what is your catalog going to start with? And I and I pre- and I appreciate that. If they came out up front and said, "This is a model. This is not that we are going to have five thousand. We hope to one day have that." Yeah. Again, this is how you present it. Mm-hmm. Don't ban everybody. Don't be snarky with everybody. Their social media person has like the thinnest skin possible. Don't ban everybody. Don't squelch people. Just say talks are in the in, in we're in talks, and we'll disclose information when we have it available. Oh, this is just an idea of what we hope to get to. We may even be honest. We're probably going to start with maybe ten titles, but they didn't. They opened it up with the world, and anybody that said but that's not possible, they said shut up. And that's the problem that you have. Yeah, you're, you're not presenting it well enough. And that's and that, that that's when uh, Julian uh, came to talk to us, and, and we were we were a little bit leery of some of the stuff that he was claiming, but he was talking in from a different angle, and that's why we even continued our discussion with him. And is, what did blockchain, Blockpunk, what did they do? They were showing the creators that they are actually talking to. Yeah, they showed who they are in talks with, who they're working with. This didn't. This yeah. said we went to AGA. That doesn't mean you have any t- titles. AGA will talk to anybody. <laughs> I can. I have talked to Funimation about licensing. Doesn't mean I have Funimation titles. I've talked to them, and I learned that how this whole system works. And it's not as easy as it sounds. And again, I think that's my talks with Funimation. I almost felt like a parallel with again. If I'm a, if I'm giving them the benefit out, and I'm a, not assuming they're in the bad. I agree with the idea that they felt like they could get in some kind of agreement. I've had that I have that discussion with Funimation, but I've never had them because what's happens is that not only do I have to talk to Funimation, I, they also have to talk to the holders. Even Funimation giving me access to stream one of their their titles, they have to get it agreed with by the actual owners. It's a chain of command. You can't just jump the line and say, "Well, I don't have to talk to Sean Kleckner." Yeah, you do. <laughs> he paid for it. What do you expect? He doesn't own it, but he technically does in America. He technically owns it. Now, that contract can be breached by the owner of in Japan, the actual creator, but in legal terms, he owns it. It Again, not as actual. Anyways, it's just uh, it's it's a troublesome thing, because like I said before, and that was the whole point that we made on that discussion about the postmortem of Amazon. I definitely encourage people to listen to our podcast because that was one of my, my favorite ones to do. And with the situation with Amazon, the postmortem pe- episode that we made, I yeah, I was posing the idea that I want Amazon to come back. And it's sad because it's a similar situation to things like YouTube. You never see a competitor to YouTube and why? It's you can't just throw up a tent and suddenly you have a streaming service. It's we went through the growing pains of YouTube. YouTube was one of the first ones to have so much connection to people and the ability to upload whatever videos you want and the growing community. It was at the forefront. And anything that comes after that is many times we want to say, I hate YouTube for doing this or I hate the fact that YouTube flags my video and doesn't listen to me at all. They only listen to the copyright owners. Where do I go? I'm going to go to another company and I'm going to try to run there, but there's not going to have the community. It's not going to have the availability. And anytime somebody has a hiccup on a stream at another service, they immediately come back to YouTube. Yep. They've built the infrastructure. They went through the growing pains. And now we're so used to the ability of what YouTube can do. We don't give anybody else a chance. And that's the same thing here. Crunchyroll went through the growing pains of going from illegitimate to legitimate. And now it seems like a, a strong competitor. It has the library. If, again, I would love AnimeTube to come out and say, hey, we're going to have 10 titles. Support it. Because they will eventually... This is what the the, th- the thing I told somebody on, we, on Twitter. We, we talked about this with, what, Anime Souls? We talked about this with um, the, uh, the uh, Sunrise streaming service that they yeah. did. Every time we've talked about these, we, we, we've pointed out, if you want this... You have to support it. And that you was can't. A, yeah. And that was the thing I was mentioning on Twitter was like somebody was echoing that. You're like, I want a competitor. And I'm like, OK, so and this is nothing against this person because I'm, I'm in the same boat. What do we think right now when uh, when, a, when right now, currently, 
we have essentially everything licensed right now, besides a couple with Netflix. Right now, in this current season, it's Crunchyroll and Funimation has pretty much all of it, except for one title is exclusive to Sentai, and that is the Goddess Dormitory, which I, I, I was hoping for and I assuming was going to be the case because High Dive is the only one that will touch something like that. <laughs> so what is the mentality that I, me personally, I have? Well, I don't really want to sign up for High Dive for one show. That's exactly the problem. High Dive has given up. They have like four titles this season, but they have most of it available on Crunchyroll for people. They're being nice enough to allow people to see it on Crunchyroll and not have to get a subscription with High Dive. But we're not helping that one grow. We're helping High Dive by watching it on Crunchyroll because they'll, they'll give them a cut of it. But if you want to help High Dive, keep subscribed to them, even though they have one title, because eventually... Funimation and Crunchyroll are going to become one, and High Dive is going to be off to the side going, well, nobody support us. I guess we'll have to lead the market. That's the problem you run into. You have to support them no matter how much. And again, that's the case with AnimeTube. If they came out with 10 titles, yeah, support it because eventually they could become the competitor. But we won't because we see, like with RetroQuest, too old. We we have so many. And that, that that's the other thing. Like Besides the piracy groups that doesn't like Crunchyroll and Funimation, what is the other big supporter of these alternatives? They want the older titles. They go to, they say they go to uh, all these pirate sites because they want to see these really old titles that nobody else will license. Crunchyroll only has a thousand titles because they're never going to license something really old. They'll they'll pull in, you know, discotheques titles and stuff like that, but they're not going to license something really old just to put on their streaming service. Nobody's going to watch it. So support it. Support RetroCrust. Support these. Otherwise, they're going to go away. Yeah, there 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 is another. Um... Uh, just so that everybody understands, I'm not. I don't want to completely focus on this particular thing. Something else interesting that is in this little discussion that I don't think I've heard talked about, and that is one of the things that these companies, meaning uh, Crunchyroll, Funimation, um, basically the, those those big two, are, are the are the meatiest of the of the discussion. But something that you guys need to really pay attention to is there is a fire here that we've pointed at quite a few times. These people are so mad at you, they're willing to fund a competitor to you. And you guys are ignoring this over and over and over again. Now, I don't really want to go back into the reason why there's that that anger, but you guys got to either clean it up or you're going to lose a massive base. When there's a competitor that does show up, I I, I actually was complaining about this earlier today uh, when I was watching YouTube. I can't wait till a viable competition shows up to YouTube because I will smile in a way when YouTube finally takes its fall. There, You guys are just jumping all, and stomping all over your user base and you don't care. And that's the thing that all these customers see is you don't care. Yeah. And then again, that's that's the whole aspect is having a competitor there is always important. And and it, it, it sucks because I would love to put all of my cards into Crunchyroll and Funimation. But at the same time, it's going to come to a point. And it, it's funny because we haven't heard anything really recently on the whole buyout thing. So I'm... I'm assuming that's probably a bad sign for the buyout, which is technically, in my opinion, a good thing. But it's... I, I, I still want that competition there, no matter what. And like I said, if... if I think if AnimeTube did come out and present itself well and not snuffle out everybody that was kind of countering arguments, the entire creative... I mean, it's... It's pretty bad when pretty much every single company, every single person, representative, people that have worked in the anime industry are all saying, no, this is not this is not how it works. Just literally most of, most of the cases really around the licensing aspect, which, again, if they presented, hey, we have investors that say if, if this ends up turning out well, they will invest in order to get us titles. And those titles will then because that's I can see that being a thing. If I was a, an investor and I seen a alternative that was coming out that could possibly compete I may invest in saying, okay, well, we will invest in getting you this many titles and you will give us a cut for what you get for the streaming. Yeah. 
That is a that is a thing investors do. Mm-hmm. So it's not out of the it's not out of the league that this could be a thing. It's just it didn't present itself well enough. And then again, it disappearing and running off is <laughs> kind of a question mark as well. But yeah, that was um that was extremely interesting. And I, I think the other weird thing about the whole situation is just how how they were calling everybody liars. I think that's a really disingenuous place to start from. Just basically saying that you're all you're all being lied at. Licenses don't cost this much. They were they're they're all lying to you to make you believe that it costs more than it does. And it's like, well, then and the, the exclusivity thing blows me away the most because it's like, hey, um, hey, a crunchy roll. I know that this season apparently Funimation has the Duke of Death and the Maid and his maid. Do you know that you guys can actually have that on your platform too? I mean, big shock. I didn't know this either, but apparently. All the titles Funimation has this season, you can get two. I mean, we've all been lied to. Why don't you have it on your platform? If it was that now, easy, why would they not do it? Now, I'm not opposed to the idea that a um, a licensing fee might be a lot lower than they're actually letting on. I'm not opposed to that. I I think it's I think it's false. I think that it is actually as much as they're saying it is. I mean, yeah, if you look at there's there's data trackers out there that it says how much the anime industry makes on streaming services alone, streaming exports. I mean, you can look at the data. It's there. It's not going to give you a per show basis because that is not going to be available. But it gives you at least the lump of value of what it is making what what money total is injecting into the Japanese market. Right. And that and that's what we've talked about before. Where we would love to see the actual demographics on a lot of this this stuff. It, it just the fascinating uh uh information alone just in the demographics by itself. Yeah, it would be fun to see kind of the the back end where you're actually talking about the licensing fees and all that stuff. It would be fascinating to actually see that information Unfortunately, you won't because NDAs and all that garbage, yeah. you're never going to see that. But I'm not opposed to the idea that licensing fees may very well be a lot lower than they're actually letting on. And actually, all the money that they're making is from the royalties alone. Now, I'm not opposed to that, but still doesn't doesn't dis- discredit the idea that there is an exclusivity that is inherent in a lot of these these companies i would be you would be an idiot to like andrew was saying um go and say i'm gonna release this one i'm gonna pay a fortune and a half to be able to stream naruto and then five other companies have the 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 full ability to stream that would show in your area crunch your role well they, they eventually did through the through connections but wouldn't all these companies love to have dragon ball on their title on their yeah. list High Dive would love to have Dragon Ball Z on their on their streaming mm-hmm. service. Every company then, would love it. The interesting thing that would happen then is whoever has the best um, uh, player would be the winner. Yeah. And unfortunately, as much as I would love that kind of ability, that's not going to happen. And that's, that's the sad conundrum that I always face whenever I'm talking about this stuff is I want to defend the idea behind it, but I hate the outcome. If you if you if you get what I'm saying, like I. I understand the idea of why there's exclusivities, but I hate the the outcome. I love that, again, High Dive can get attention because they have the dorm goddess thing. But at the same time, it because it, it's the only reason that you want to go for their service. Otherwise, there would be no reason to go to High Dive. The exclusivities technically drive people to come to platforms, whereas they normally wouldn't be there. But at the same time, that's also the reason why one company gets more attention than another, and their basically their wallet and their their investment into the the catalog is important. So it sucks that Sony has the bigger pockets and they're going to get more titles on Funimation. But at the same time, I like the idea that it is the reason why you would support them. It's a conundrum. I hate it, but I like it. <laughs> it's it's that. And, but that's the other thing is they were talking about you know. There's no reason why these companies shouldn't get global rights and have everything available everywhere. Again, I think it's a misinformation. I think somebody's whispering in this dude's ear or either that or he's a really bad liar because it's currently happening everywhere and these titles are not getting licensed everywhere. That's why net that's why I do support Netflix's push in how they make things global. 
like with we're going to talk about later with some of their titles. They're they're uh, they have I think they have a movie currently that they're going to have stream on their platform the same day it will be hitting theaters in Japan. I love that. I love that Hathaway was available so quickly to us where normally we'd have to wait for a theater screening in America. We would have to wait for it to go on a Blu-ray and then we'd have to buy it. It wouldn't be available streaming. But Netflix is saying, no, we're going to have it available everywhere worldwide. That's always been their push. And then you have other companies like Funimation that are going, well, we license this title, but we're not going to have it available in this country. And then nobody else can stream it. That's, again, that you need a market of competition. And sadly, that competition is driven by exclusivity. So again, I like, I understand and I like the concept. I hate the outcome, but it's it's for a reason. It's what drives these companies to figure out, eventually, you hope that, you know, Crunchyroll and Funimation and all these companies will realize, man, look at what Netflix is doing with this worldwide releasing. We hate Netflix, by the way. Again, this is this is me, the, the realist of me. I hate Netflix, by the way, because they hold things for so long. But at least they're making a statement on worldwide. So again, competition, they all do their own thing to get attention. And then hopefully each individual company sees what they're doing and goes, we should probably incorporate that into ourselves. And we hope eventually Netflix goes, you know, we should probably have this stuff available a little bit quicker. <laughs> we don't hold it for, you know, like Beastars. Literally, I think that was what, a fall show? And we're finally getting it this week? Literally tomorrow, isn't it? No, two days. In two days, be stars. <laughs> Why? Why? You do things so right over here. You did great with Hathaway. You're doing great with this other movie that you're doing. Why do you fail here? Each individually do, does their own good, good things. They do their own failures. And hopefully they look at each other as competition and breeds off that competition. Innovation. At the same time, you need exclusivities in order to do that. Otherwise, why would Netflix try? Because if they do get the Hathaway film, yeah, I guess the competition there would be that they get it out quicker, but then what will be the point in anybody else getting it at that point? It's It sucks. <laughs> I hate it, but it is what it is. Uh, I'm running everywhere, but um, yeah, if you go to the Kickstarter page for Anime 2 right now, you just basically see their, essentially, I guess, the... I don't know if they got multiple people contacting them, but... Obviously, what they list as being the reasoning is apparently a company that does um, claims to different companies. It's a uh, Remove Your Media LLC. It's a company that basically speaks for licenses, and they went over there for in on behalf of Viz Media, according to Naruto artwork. <laughs> so Naruto killed it. <laughs> Naruto was the death nail, apparently, according to the 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 claims page, but. And yeah. Viz, Viz is is fairly 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 large. I, I could see them. Yeah, Naruto, I, I know sure. Naruto. Naruto is is probably their baby, and they don't mess with that at all. I'm sure one of their babies. I'm they they have quite a few. One of their babies. Ah, <sighs> like I said, it's it's unfortunate because I do I do like the idea of a competitor, and I and like I said, if if they came out and presented themselves better, I would have probably supported it. I would if they if the way that they presented it was. Here's what we have. This is what we're going for. A roadmap. What a roadmap would be great. <laughs> Just put a roadmap saying, this is where we are. This is what we hope to do. And this is the future. That's what a roadmap's for. I think every Kickstarter needs to have a roadmap. You need to present to people. And But that's been my problem with Kickstarter in general, always. has always been, one, the fact that there's no accountability in Kickstarter. Literally, you're, you're kickstarting an idea. And that idea can fail. And But I think, the thing that you have to keep in mind in order to get me to even consider the concept of Kickstarter is to have a roadmap and present what your goals are and essentially being very realistic about what you're intending to do. And again, I don't think they did that. They were too busy showing off their <laughs> their their anime tube chan, whatever that lady is that they had on there. But there you go. That's, uh, that's our thoughts on anime tube kickstarter hopefully we don't get a uh, uh we don't get sued <laughs> but yeah 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 moving on we have we have other news but this isn't this isn't just the anime to debacle podcast episode so uh like i mentioned earlier there's a pretty big news around amazon this was uh it's so funny like i i think when i've heard about this i replied saying wow just when i thought 
this one we just did our, you know, post-mortem for Anime Prime and how I was hoping, or Anime Prime, uh, Anime Strike was their old thing. And now it's Amazon Prime, uh, or at least it's under Amazon Prime. I was hoping that Amazon would come back and I want the competitor there. And like I said, I the reason why I say Amazon is because Amazon technically has infrastructure pre-built. Like I said, with Anime Tube, the difficulty there is they would have to create infrastructure. They would have to create a service and have the capacity to do it. Whereas Amazon already has it built in. They have other things they're streaming. They have the infrastructure, and so they can build off of that. And when they left, technically it felt like I was a little bit upset of that. But apparently they're still doing something. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, Amazon came out with a big bomb. They said, hey, uh, we have announced that we are going to be streaming exclusively Evangelion, the film, 3.0 plus 1.01, Trice Upon a Time, or Thrice Upon a Time. Essentially the final film of the Evangelion series. They're going to be streaming it worldwide except for Japan on August 13th. So again, I will acknowledge, thank you Amazon, specifically thank you for having it worldwide. This is not a just, you know, North America. This is a worldwide they're trying to go for, except for Japan. I'm sorry, Japan. You already had your chance to watch it. It's our turn now. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a, that was a huge one. I am very surprised at that. Um, how does that make you feel, Chris? Are you happy that Amazon is back? I don't. I, think I don't, think, I they're don't think they're back. <laughs> I, I think that this was. They probably... seen a cash cow and they went for it. Well, that or or the they already had the the license back when it first announced. And, well, and when they first announced Funimation. when they first announced that was back when. Amazon. That's true. Strike. They could have bought the license on this particular film back when, yeah. when Amazon Prime thingy was, or the anime strike was on. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Uh, marking my calendars for August 30th. That's our 13th. That's literally a month away. That's exciting. Um, I know. I'm not saying, I'm not saying I'm just, I'm speculating. I don't know. So <laughs> no, that makes sense. Cause that, I mean, well, how long ago was that? <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it's Three been. Years? No, we've been, been talking about it for know. a while. So. I, I guess it depends on what at what point they were they started licensing it. I guess is yeah. really the big question. Um, yeah, they could have been at the point in which they were starting to get talks about licensing it out. I mean, we were joking about how it was going to take like five and a half years before we actually seen the show, so, and it seems like it's been about that long. So you want to hear my conspiracy? Sure, I love conspiracies. So let's go with your idea, and let me mer- let me merge it with my th- idea. So let's. This is Andrew's theory. This is completely me making things up. This is not what happened, um, at least so far we know. So yeah, you do have am- anime strike, and Amazon's anime service is kicking off. And they're 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 trying to throw as much money around as possible. Not really that much technically, because they didn't really get much, what four titles a season. And yeah, so here comes Studio Kara, whoever actually the, you know, it would, I don't know if it would be Studio Kara, but technically the the holders of the Evangelion series, they're all in a, you know, a room together. They're like, okay, so this movie's going to happen. They're like, yeah, it's, it's really going to happen. This is going to be amazing. But is it really going to happen? Are we really going to have this finish? Yeah, we're really going to make this film. Okay, so if it does get made, we need to get, uh, we need to start selling the license around. We, get, we have some, you know... Some companies that are going to want to distribute it in other places. Okay, cool. Um, how about Funimation? They did the releases before. No. No more Funimation. <laughs> Do we remember what happened with the whole three? The, I was thinking the, the same film? thing. I was thinking about the same thing. Oh, I, my Funimation gosh, dude. probably doesn't want to touch it with a 10-foot pole. No, I don't think Funimation didn't want to touch it. And Funimation wants it. Every company True. wants it. But do they want to mess with Funimation again? Because do we remember what the talks that was coming around the release of the last film Essentially, they had dubbing problems, uh, script problems, the translation problems. There was a lot of problems behind the release. We had such a long delay before we got to see that. And I think when they first did the screenings for the original setup, they did. They they pulled it. They didn't like what they did. So, yeah, I, I think what came around is they probably thought about, you know, who to give it to. And they probably said, again, this is me speculating. They probably said no. Funimation is a no. Well, who else do we have? Amazon's like, hey, right here. We'll take it for you. I am, I'm sure Netflix was maybe not in the room at that time. I mean, they eventually got the, the original TV series, so Netflix does know what Evangelion is. I mean, obviously. But, 
Yeah, I just think that's that's a funny thought. I think that's hey, totally the case. Hey, hey, that's more on my argument of uh, original artist intent. But hey, what do I know? Yeah. But yeah, uh, they have a trailer available on their their uh, YouTube channel. It's uh, I I I I listened to it. I didn't watch it. I I don't want to. I don't want to see anything. I literally want to go on this completely blind. I've been avoiding uh, any discussion. If I see Evangelion and anything, I just my eyes just kind of blurred away from my thoughts. So I hope I I hope I get a a a really good solid conclusion to this. I'm I'm <laughs> ain't gonna happen. <laughs> ain't gonna happen. <laughs> And if you think this is a, I like, I like how l- they list it as literally quote unquote final. <laughs> it's like we all know it's not going to happen. Uh, they'll milk this as long you, as they are can. Are you sure? I, I, this is, this it is seems Studio like Cars that guy is only. so tired of doing this sh- story. But I think the, I think the actual owners in Studio Car is still going to continue it on. I just don't think they're ever going to let it die. This is their, this is how they make money. Evangelion is how they make money. They might make a spin off something like, let's, let's make an Oscar spin off. Oscar Lane, then we'll do a Ray pre-story, full-on story for it, unless they actually get into that with the final. Are you sure he's not tired of doing that story? <laughs> he's probably tired of it, but they're they're not tired of it. True. They're not gonna be tired of it. Any investor's not gonna be tired of it. They want more. I bet they made they made bank on this film. But yeah, it was number one rate on its opening, obviously. Two million tickets. About thirty million dollars. It's all right. I mean, for an animated film, I guess it is. So, really cool. Definitely, definitely excited for that. Definitely watching it. Um, and here's the other thing I would kind of mention: Netflix is set to stream "Worlds" or "Words Bubble Up Like Soda Pop" film on July 22nd. And yeah, like I said, this is kind of exciting from, I guess, a, a standpoint of availability. Is that apparently this is going to be streaming worldwide on the day that it's opening in Japan? So. It's almost like in our own living rooms, we get to experience at the same time as Japan does <laughs> in the theaters, but you just don't have to go to a theater. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I already have that one marked on my Netflix account. I'm, I'm pretty excited for that one to come out. But again, July 22nd, that will be available to stream on Netflix. So really cool. Really cool. Really cool. Excited for that one. Have you have you looked anything on that one? Mm-mm. The Boy Meets Girl story depicts how words and music bridge the gap between Cherry, a boy who is terrible at communicating with other people, which is typical, and Smile, a girl who <laughs> hides behind a mask. They meet in a mundane suburban shopping mall in a provincial city. Cherry always wears headphones and puts the feelings that he cannot utter into his hobby, uh, haiku poems. Smile always wears a mask to conceal her large front teeth, uh, for which she has uh, dental braces. Uh, as a popular video star, she streams a, a video about seeking cuteness. So. so they have insecurities, and they'll come together to get over them. So, cool stuff. Uh, let's see. Kind of sad news. I guess we didn't really know when this was actually coming out, but apparently they have uh, the Demon Girl Next Door second season is going to be premiering in April 2022. So... Got quite a bit of time to wait on that sequel. I'm, oh, I'm a little sad, but... Hmm? I said, oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Everything's in 2022. <laughs> well, I yeah, do know that... Shield Hero. I think they're talking about um, locking down again over there, so... Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Sentai Filmworks has licensed the first Girls on Panzer Daz film uh, finale film, so um, that's pretty cool. I, I thought that somebody else had that. Where Was it streaming on Crunchyroll? Mm. I honestly yeah, don't know because we have that. That's weird. That's weird. Maybe I'm thinking of a different one. It's the first one of them. It must have been another film. I don't know. I thought they had that already, so I guess I'm confused. <laughs> but yeah, of course, that's the first of six total films. Six total final films, right? <laughs> finale films. Six total final fi- finale films. That makes sense. Thank you, Japan, and your weird titling of stuff. Ugh. This is a shocker to me. Apparently, there's a sequel manga to school if. There you go. <laughs> I've seen this news that says literally the sequel manga to school live is ending in July. And I'm like, wait, there's a school live sequel manga? <laughs> I have the entire collection. And I don't know that there's a sinking sequel manga. What in the world? So apparently, I'm going to be looking up the sequel manga. And um, 
giving that a read because I didn't know that exists. So that's cool. And that's one of those things that kind of sucks is it, 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 it's ending. Wait, I didn't even know it was a thing. How could I support it if I don't know that it's a thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, there you go. That's that's ending in July. Definitely check that out if you're interested. Uh, Orimo is to get a new manga spinoff titled Ore no Imoto ga uh, Konanai uh, Kawaii Wake ga Nai Kuroneko If. And um, I, I, I guess you can kind of infer what that is in t- implying. It's a, an alternate ending story for the Orimo series. So you're going to kill me. You can probably guess what that will be and want to check that out. I'm not going to infer anything else on it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you, you excited for that? Are you going to check that out? Was it, wasn't the original one a light novel? It was a light novel, wasn't it? Orimo? I don't know. I, I really don't. They probably have a manga. I watched the show, so did you finish I'll it? Accept, no, no, <laughs> it chose not to. I wonder I, why. Remember, I I, <laughs> I cut it off after the uh, uh, Kuroneko episode. About point where you start going downhill. Uh, moving on, Mappa has debuted a tra- has debuted a trailer for its film titled Alice to Tris no uh, Mobo Mabo Roshi. Kojo, or Alice and uh, Teresa's illusion, uh, illusory factory. Uh, the film, of course, is being written by Mario Kata, so if you're a fan of Mario Kata, Makia, and all that kind of stuff. There might be a person around here that likes Mario Kata, so... Yep, yep. My number one anime of all time was written by Mario Kata. This is true as well, so maybe there's yeah. two people who like Mario Is Kata. your number one anime of all time a Mario Kata film? Oh, Andrew apparently is a more of a Mario Kata fan than Chris because his number one anime of all time is written by Mario Kata, and Chris's is not. This might be a truth, Oof. unfortunately. Oof. Oof. And I, I, you like I, the collective more than me, so that's fine. I liked what? I don't know that I have anything Mario Kata that I don't like, so I guess that's not true. You didn't like? Well, I, do you own it? Um, no, I don't own anything Mario Kata. I don't. Yeah, think. you do. You have We Cross. True. And I think that's it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, I technically liked uh, Lost Village more than you, or did you like it more than me? I don't know. I don't know. I was the one that we. I didn't like it at first, it. but I, I did I, like I it. I think at I the suffered end. better with the beginning part than you did. <laughs> True. And then we both enjoyed the <laughs> ending. So I think that's kind of a. I think that's a wash. I think that's a wash. I don't know. I Mario Kart is a very very unique taste <laughs> that's putting it lightly um she's very psychological yeah driven and that can be off-putting because it, it's it she's very mel- mel- the main key thing and it's the problem that i have technically with her stuff she's very melodrama melodramatic at that's at, at points so i think that's always been kind of the sticking point for a lot of like or dislike of her stuff i mean lost village is a prime example extremely melodramatic but at the same time, technically, it's within the rule set of what they're dealing with that they're melodramatic. Yeah. It's just it's not presented to you that that is the case until you get way into it and you suffer through that melodrama <laughs> that you finally well, see um, it. I, I think that uh, Anohana is a... Is it Anohana? Anohana, yeah. The I, I think that I, I was very turned off at the very beginning of that one as well. And everybody everybody was absolutely nuts that I would love this show... And I actually kind of w- really didn't like it um, until I finished it. And then I started to understand, okay, this is, there, there's, there's a theme that I keep going through with uh, Mario Kata. And now I really, really do love Mario Kata's work. Um, I, I just, as long as I'm patient through the first bit, I will eventually get to a point where I love what, Ever it is that she's given me so far. I, I mean, we we were vastly impressed with um, when she had some kind of a structure on um, uh, the the Iron Blooded Orphans. That was one of those where you can see if she's trying more for a set in stone. This is where I want to go. Um, and she doesn't deviate too much. She has a knack for exploring emotions and that is her biggest probably 
um, the biggest credit that I can give her of anything is she is she excels at just human moments, and that's I love it. I think I have like three of four, four of her titles. <laughs> so I have Hanasaki Roha. Uh, True Tears was technically written. The anime was written by her. I didn't get Iron Blood Orphans yet, but I do want to get that one. Nag- uh, Lull in the Sea I have, so. Machia. Which is another one. I have Machia. Toradora I have. True Deers I have, like I said before. I think the interesting ones are like Blast of Tempest, which I think she helped with the scripting. I don't think it was that she was the creator of that one. Because I think that had a source material that she wasn't a part of. That one was another one that was we we didn't we had no idea who Mario Kata was at the time and we were really really mixed on that one. Um, I liked it overall, um, but it was such a weird the the way it came off is really really weird and it's it's I I almost agree with you I don't think that she had full control over that one. It seems like they were trying to insert a lot of stuff that she probably didn't want to do but she just worked with it because she had to yeah i'm trying to look it up no it was funny because that was one of those ones where i it just kind of over time went down a weird road yeah she's not she's not listed as credit uh credited for the the manga it was based off of so just a serious composition apparently because that would be like way back there no that's 2013 i guess that's weird that was i would love to know when she really honestly came on the map it was probably toradora yeah, I think Toradora is probably true. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, not Hanasaki Warhawk, because I don't think... Han- well, Tor- nothing really beats the fandom that was behind... <laughs> but I think her name was probably the most known with Anahana. Because you can't... you can't. Yeah. As much as I think Toradora is amazing, and there's definitely a huge fandom, I don't think the fandom behind that one was really kind of going after the create- the creation behind it. I think there's... I think the fandom for Toradora is for it itself, whereas I think on Ahana, a lot of people were trying to get more of an idea of who was behind it than anything else. I don't know how they really explain that. It's just like a the way that on Ahana gets into the psyche and the drama that it's getting into is a lot more in depth than just a really fun, really really fun rom com. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'll be looking. I'll look for that one. It kind of the the PV for. At least for I'm I'm going I'm I'm getting us back to the uh, Alice movie that we're that's coming out. It it really does kind of give a perspective in that PV. It went crazy sci-fi supernatural really quickly with the the PV, <laughs> but it kind of it feels like it's given a perspective of like two girls and one guy, and it seems like I'm a, I'm inferring that the possibly these two girls are possibly light and dark, but that's just my speculation. She loves her love scene. triangles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, and it looks like the world's ending or something like that. It looks kind of like things can get really crazy with it. it. looks beautiful, though. But I think that's the case with a lot of things MAPPA, MAPPA right now is they're, they're, they're definitely coming out with some incredibly visually beautiful uh, series, which is kind of in the wake of a lot of people talking about their payments and, and, and studio running going on. But, yeah, we'll see. Well, hopefully MAPPA will not roll over and die and hopefully money will be kind of correctly divvied out for what they're doing because I don't want them to kind of fall apart at this point because they're doing such incredible work but I think that's also the issue of incredible work sometimes mean passion over payment and that's the unfortunate thing that always comes with all of this stuff so but yeah Mappa also revealed a trailer for the Chainsaw Man, which everybody's kind of freaking out about. A lot of really passionate Chainsaw Man fans out there, and it definitely, based on the PV, looks similar to the styling and and visual beauty that uh, um, Jujutsu Kaisen was. So definitely going to be uh, one to keep an eye out for if you like that kind of amazing animation Sakuga stuff. So hyper violent too, probably. <laughs> I I just guessed on Chainsaw Man. I've kind of figured. What is the Japanese fascination with people with like things on their head? Like you have like No Guns Life has a gun as a head, and this guy has a chainsaw as a head. Don't know. What is that weird fascination with heads being replaced by weird stuff? So yeah, look forward to that. I, I don't know that they have a listed time it's coming out, but I mean, it looks like it's already pretty much in works. I'm, 
I'm wondering if this will be a fall show. Hmm, hmm. Dingy's a poor young man who'll do anything for money, even hunting down devils with his pet dog, Pochta. He's a simple man with simple dreams. It, by the size of having a chainsaw as a head. <laughs> simple dreams, drowning under a mountain of debt, but his sad life gets turned upside down one day when he's betrayed by someone he trusts. I thought it was that his mom said he's going to move in with his uncle and aunt in Bel Air. Anyways, now with the power of the devil inside him, Denji has become a whole new man. Chainsaw man. He's even got chainsaws coming out of his arms. He'll never touch a person again because he'll hurt them. <laughs> so much for a simple life. Yeah, so much for a simple life. It's true, true, very true. I think we mentioned before that uh, the creator for Dreaming Under Mary, uh, Yoshitaka Ushiki, is doing a new manga. Well, apparently that's been revealed as Oikaze no Jin. Uh, this is going to be hitting in the 21st issue, July 21st issue of uh, Hobunsha's manga, uh, manga Time Kirara Forward magazine. I love the title of these man uh, magazines. <laughs> uh, the English title is Jin the Tailwind. Uh, the manga will center around a journey of a young man who works for a delivery company and a straightforward and energetic young woman. So, check that out if that sounds interesting to you. Uh, Oppo Sims apparently is coming to an end. Of course, this is uh, Sutomu Nihei's new ma newest manga that he's working on. Of course, he is the creator behind Nice Sidonia um, and uh, Bl Blamu. I call it Blamu. Sorry. That's how they pronounce it. <laughs> uh, but apparently it's going to be ending in two chapters on August 25th. This is one that I checked out and I was reading quite a bit of it. Um, but then I kind of, at some point, just stopped buying the chapter by chapters because it gets expensive after a while. <laughs> so, You're right. I don't know. It, it felt like it wasn't really. It felt too familiar. He's got a, he's got a particular. He, it seems like he keeps a lot of his stuff in like the same universe. It seems like. And so it felt very similar to things like Macedonia. And I wasn't really getting too much out of it. Actually, it feels more like Blamu, if anything. But I don't know. It, it got a little bit too over the top with the whole crazy, I don't know, sci-fi-ish battle between different types of targets. Like, there's all these, like, really high-powered supreme beings that go around and, and keep the, the lives of people down. And he's kind of taking one out at a time. So... I don't know. It was interesting, but um, I might I might go back. Have to go back and see how it ends up turning out in the end. So there you go. Eleven Arts has announced that they have licensed the Gintama, the very final anime film. Um, thank you, Gintama, for pointing out the absurdity of final films by making a the very final film. You know that's what they're making fun of. <laughs> Leave it, Gintama. <laughs> I I can see that, and and, and as um. As much as he uh, likes to poke at kind of tropes and stuff like that, I, him saying final, you know, it's not the final. It just isn't because <laughs> that's the way he is. They're going to have another uh, they, film. They keep, it's going to be the very, yeah. very final. Yeah, they, they, they've they dragged him back it's like five times so far, I think. Yeah. I really need to get started on that one. Really need to get started on that one. Mm -hmm. Uh, Restaurant to Another World, its second season, is going to be premiering in fall, so Chris will be excited for that. I think you're on that one, right? Mm-hmm. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, apparently they're making another another OVA for <laughs> Strike the Blood. Who's getting all the OVAs over in here? I, have you seen anybody licensing the OVAs for that? I want to say Crunchyroll is, keeps popping up with some of the OVAs. You think? Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure, um, definitely, you know physical, I know that, I know that Slime... Probably censored. Oh, as far as uh, uh, physical, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, that's one of those ones where, like, every time we see it, like, on the previews or something, and, or in cases like this, I kind of go, where can I see this stuff? It, keep, it seems like they keep coming out. So this is, like, what, the the sixth one? Or the fifth one, yeah. The fifth one. I don't know. I would I would kind of like to go back to that one. I, I did I didn't finish the the first ones they had available. I know that because I it got to this one point. I think they don't, they were doing a body swap thing, and at some point, wasn't that the one that had like the prison and stuff that they were getting involved with? Yeah, I think it was so. Like keeping somebody in a prison, and then there was a prison break or something like that. And I just kind of 
kind of lost track of it, but I would definitely like to go back and check it out. Well, it's like Disco it, Tech the, Media this, has the first one. If I remember right, I think uh, uh, the one that I wanted you to do was Tokyo Ravens uh, because both mm-hmm. of them came out at the same time. And yeah, Tokyo Ravens, I think, was the one that I thought you would enjoy more than that one because that one was more of the but at the same time but at the same time remember this was back when andrew was still on a kind of more um didn't much care for tropes as much and so these two were very kind of quote-unquote tropish um and strike the blood was stronger with the tropes but had more interesting things going for it than tokyo ravens and I figured Tokyo Ravens was the one that I figured he would like more. Yeah, Strike the Blood had a really amazing opening. <laughs> <laughs> and, I really, and it's Are so you funny because sure? that was the one that had the 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 character getting killed right off the bat. And I was like, and that would have been like something that would probably happen here recently. And you'd be like, yeah, I'm done with this show. So it would be like equally back, bad back then. But yeah, it looks like Discotech has the original series of 24 episodes was it 24 that was crazy i didn't think it was 24 episodes um they have the original 24 episodes but they don't have it doesn't list them as having any of the ones that are more recent or at least the ovas um so that's kind of kind of sucks crunchyroll does have a listing for strike the blood but they have strike the blood the original series and then they have Strike the Blood OVA as and it lists it as season three, <laughs> and then they have Strike the Blood the uh, second. So I'm guessing that's the first two OVAs. So they need three more. <laughs> they need three more. They're th- uh, three behind. I don't know. I have to check that out. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I have a lot of other stuff to. Cut. It's hard to. It's hard to remember. I mean, I I do remember that I was not hot on the way that they were finalizing out the second season. So, uh, anything in the OVA to fix second what they core, left, or talking about the second OVA? Because it was a first season second of twenty four episodes, and then they've had five OVAs. Yeah, I haven't watched any of the OVAs. Okay, I'm so pretty sure. Second core, then. Yeah. Whatever they, where they were leaving it off on, I, I was not hot on at all. I wonder if that's where I fell off on it. No, you, if you, you never got to the point where I had gotten because you had, you had fell out during the prison stuff. I fell out or I finished it and what they finished it was, okay, it was time stuff and I didn't like uh-oh, that. Uh oh, uh oh, <laughs> naughty thing for Chris. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, moving on, we have Lucasfilms has announced that they will be collaborating with several studios and creators for its Star Wars Visions anthology for Disney+. Plus. That was the nasty part. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm excited for this, Disney+. Plus. Nah, I don't want to get Disney+. Plus. I don't want Disney+. Plus. So I'm curious what your thoughts is on this one. I, I kind of looked into a little bit of it, and I, I like the idea behind it. Like I said, I kind of hate the fact that it's going to be on Disney Plus, which I don't really care to get a whole. For those that aren't aware of it, essentially what they're doing is they're going to like several studios, including um, Geno Studio. We have Trigger. I mean, you, you watch the PV for I it. I want to see and a you're Trigger in Star Wars. <laughs> uh, Kinema Citrus, Science Saru, Production IG. Uh, they're going to all these different creators and studios and saying, essentially make us a short and I, I think they specifically say in the trailer that they're not they're not going to be within the bounds of the universe so this isn't going to be canon i believe that's what they specifically are saying is that this is not going to be canon essentially just take the guts of star wars and do what you want with it so like some of the studios are doing like essentially alien characters that are like living their life like in some planet off the side and maybe having some kind of aspect of the force involved with their life, just kind of these little element, these little stories that aren't te- technically within the franchise, but are inspired by them, which I think is actually really cool. And of course, yeah, Trigger looks like if you took Kill a Kill and mixed it with <laughs> Star Wars, that's what you get. A lot of the the key arts look freaking sick. I they look awesome. I. That's something that I could get excited about, honestly. It's kind of like one of those things, like, with the whole Berserk situation, uh, with his passing, it's like, you'd know, 
you see that passion that everybody has for what he inspired by the fact that all these groups, all these companies, all these people that were inspired by him are obviously coming out with their condolences. But at the same time, you see that inspiration there. Yeah. And there's no doubt that Star Wars has a huge, huge inspiration upon the entire industry, multiple mediums. And so when you see that video and you see these creators are like going, essentially somebody coming to them and saying, Disney coming to them and saying, hey, you want to do a, a short based on this? Pro- yes. <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. you don't even let him finish the sentence. Like, yes, I would love to do something crazy. But I, it, that's my my desire, my hope is, that, like I said, I think somewhere in the trailer it says some of the effect that they essentially are allowed to do whatever they want outside of canon. And that's what I hope for. I don't really necessarily want them to have to stay within canon because what does that do? That makes them have to be approve what they're doing and approve that it fits within some sort of time frame and restricts what they can do. But if they can if they can allow them to go, just take the concept of what Star Wars is and make it your own. That's what I I technically want Trigger to make a kill a kill with lightsabers. It's fine. I want them to do what they feel passionate, what they would be inspired to do. And it seems like that creative freedom is there. And if that creative freedom is there, I, I'm, all, I'm all for it. I just yeah. hope they release it on Blu-ray, <laughs> Blu-ray I, I, later. <laughs> with with a lot of the stuff that is going on in the West, it's it's one of those mixed bags because, yes, I, 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 I know that a lot of the creative talent is – there's a lot of creative talent in Japan. Mm-hmm. And I wish that in some – in some ways, I wish that they would – they could tap into it. Um, but as as – the West is right now. I'm, I, I'm concerned of capturing that and making it into the West. And I don't want that. I want, I want Japan to be Japan. Right. That's, that's where I hope that the creative freedom is there. Yeah. They're probably going to prevent them from doing something that's going to be maybe inappropriate or something, but I hope that there's at least a creative freedom there that allows them to express what they want to express. And that against my own, statements i made earlier it's technically is something that yeah when that does go up on disney plus i might want to go ahead and subscribe just for that short period of time to show them i support the idea of i love that they're they're allowing that creative freedom to support that concept so maybe i will subscribe for a little bit just to (laughs) just to show them those, those hits on that one show just to show them that this was a cool thing if it ends up being a good thing i mean it could turn out to be something really garbage in the end but to again that creative freedom and like i said i i agree with you a lot of the artwork and stuff the concepts that they have already look really cool i mean i i totally would love a crazy you know samurai jackish type of um or afro samurai ish looking <laughs> cyber uh lightsaber fight or something like that or like i said kill a kill with lightsabers that kind of stuff sure go nuts have fun with it and like i said i think I think Mario Kata making a, a, a romance story in the middle of oh <laughs> Star gosh. Wars. Oh my gosh, yeah, definitely. Full of melodrama. I can she out melodrama the first films? <laughs> 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 Not the chronologically released films. I'm talking about the, the first episodes. Can she outdo that melodrama? <laughs> Anakin Skywalker <laughs> melodrama. <laughs> Uh yeah. No, she 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 could fix it. <laughs> she would make it more stomachable. Uh make it Anahana spin off of Star Wars. <laughs> Suddenly all we want Kenobi's dressed up in a dress and we're trying to figure out why. <laughs> that would mess me There's up. There's the title. That would mess me up. There's our title. There's our title right there. Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Kenobi in a dress. dress. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Mario Kata makes a Star Wars film. Anyway, <laughs> cool stuff though. Uh, moving on, we have the official website for when will uh, Ayumu make his move. Manga has listed the anime adaptation for July of 2022. So another 2022 anime series that we're waiting for. Ah, 2022. Why is everything 2022? At least we're more than halfway through this year, so. That is true. It's kind of scary how fast the year is going. Very scary. Uh, Some pretty exciting news. We have uh, Vinland Saga has been listed to have a second season in the works, or at least they announced that they're going to have a second season in the works. Not that it's listed. 
Um, so that's exciting. Now I pause. I pause with this one. Like I, when I first seen it, I was excited, and I think my initial thought was to immediately look to see who is going to be working on it. Because obviously you have a second season announced. It's not always going to be the original people working on it. Sometimes there's schedule issues and they go with other studios like we have with Attack on Titan going to another studio. And this is another Wit Studio title. And honestly, I had my struggles with the series, but I loved how they actually put together the directing and the visuals and the music. Everything was beautiful with the series. So my initial thought is, is Wit Studio doing it again? And they're not listed yet. And that has me concerned. <laughs> I don't... If they're not listing Wit Studio yet, that means there's probably a schedule conflict. So I'm kind of... I'm hesitant on this one if I'm I'm, ex- I'm going to get excited or not. They do have the same director, Sh- uh, Shuhei Yabuta. He's still working on it. So that's a good thing. But like I said, they don't have the studio listed yet, so that makes me believe they're probably going to go with a different studio, maybe MAPPA. <laughs> Which, again, goes back to the whole struggles we have with MAPPA taking over stuff. They do incredible stuff, but at the same time, they're kind of overworked at this point. <sighs> I don't know. I know there's a lot of people saying that I think people need to temper their expectation for the second season. Because I think of what, what essentially I'm getting... And this is not to go very spoilery because I do, I'm avoiding it myself. But to give an idea, um, yeah, essentially the first season, as a lot of people pointed out, is essentially a prequel story to what it really is. So you do have a lot of build up for essentially Vikings and crazy combat happening and and all this other stuff happening. And, and then, of course, the very end of it, something happens at the first season and it again, is a prologue to the actual story, which a lot of people are saying is going to be opening up to basically the character farming land, and it might become a lot more quieter than the original season was. So I I myself is, am going to be tempering my expectations to not expect this to be the first season again and just, you know, new things happening, but actually probably a shift in the narrative completely to what the writer actually wanted to get into. So... Again, I'm not looking too much into it because I don't want to see spoilers, but I do think that's an important thing to keep in mind going into the second season. So there you have it. But yeah, I'm I'm, I'm curious. And I, if, to that extent, I guess it doesn't matter if Wit Studio works on it. It might not need a crazy amount of animation. I don't know exactly what they're going to be getting into and if it needs that type of level animation. So yeah, there, there you have it. Moving on, we have Sentai Filmworks. I, I mentioned this earlier. They have licensed the Mother of the Goddesses Dormitory anime. So if you do want to watch that series, uh, subscribe to High Dive and support them there and check it out. I'm sure... I'm, I'm not, I wonder, does High Dive have free with, with uh, ads? Might just do it that way. I mean, either way... I do know that they have subscription locked stuff. I if they do when I when lock. I tried to poke in on a show a couple seasons ago, I remember it was locked behind the subscription. Even after a week? I don't remember that. I just remember stuff was locked behind. That was another funny thing about the anime tube thing is they're talking about like everything's free and it's like, oh, but it's free with ads. So they're doing exactly what all the other ones do already. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> I forgot to mention that. Uh, but yeah, the first episode is premiering on July 14th. So tomorrow or well, might be today, depending on when this is posted. So, there you go. Check that out. Um, like I said before, that's a good thing because I was, I would, of course, was not wanting Funimation to touch it. We joked about that in the preview. It's like, hey, we'll help you out here. Don't touch this. You're not going to like it because the PV looked very, very etchy. And so, for High Dive to have it, it's a good thing because they often get uncensored versions. So, hopefully, there's not too much censorship in it either way. So, uh, Rising of the Shield Hero, like I mentioned earlier, is the second season has been delayed until April of 2022. So I'm done. I quit. There you go. Uh, next year, I, you can come back and see There's, Chris next year. We're not doing anything else this year. Everything's delayed. Uh, it feels like last summer all over again. <laughs> no, it was funny because I tweeted immediately after this was announced. I'm like, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for Mushoku Tensai to be delayed. I don't think it's going to happen in fall. I really don't. Um, 
I want it to happen, but at the same time, if it's a COVID related thing, I, of course, I want them to be staying safe, but I don't know. It, it seems like everything's being delayed at this point, but I, I guess technically things often seem like they're being delayed, even though it's just really a, it was never announced to begin with. We just had listings for certain dates, but I, I know that one other title off the top of my head was delayed until next year, but I wonder if that's what happened to the show that I'm, I'm waiting for so a case where they probably didn't announce the date and they just it's getting, getting shelf put up yeah yeah or just fitting into schedules fitting into schedules for studios but yeah there you go there you go uh the great jahi will not be defeated is listed for two cores which doesn't really surprise me too much because it's been taking so long for it to start it's like it's got like a three week three to four week delay before it's even starting in the season so um, either they would have to go into another core or it's only going to be like a six episode series. So it doesn't surprise me so much. Uh, actually, it would be more like eight episodes, but yeah, I, I don't know. The PV didn't really sell me on it. Honestly, I, I, everything about it sounds really interesting, but the PV wasn't, didn't sell me too much on it, but we'll, we'll see. It, it looks cute still. And I'm, I'm definitely still looking forward to it. Of course, it's starting on July 31st and, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it delivers. But it is cool to see that it's going to have two cores, though. Like I said, because I was I was disappointed to see that it was waiting so long to start. But cool stuff. Uh, let's see here, Kudo Itsu San in the Superhuman Research and Development Department manga is getting an anime adaptation. Uh, they don't have a idea of the format or the debut day for it, but it has been announced for it. The manga centers around. Kuro Itsu, an assistant researcher in the Superhuman Research and Development Department of Agastia, Agastia, a villainous secret organization that battles with superheroes who try to save the world. Kuro Itsu survives or lives a busy life in Agastia. Agastia I, I'm struggling over that word. <laughs> Caught between the absurd requests of her boss, making re uh, presentations, implementing new features into superhumans. And getting results with an, a lot of time, budget, and spec requests, all without vacation. Mm -hmm. So that sounds funny. That could be fun. Yeah, so office, funny office worker in a in a in an evil corporation. This is so funny because this is kind of one of those aspects of every now and then you kind of run into people talking about the fact of why manga is so successful versus like comic books in the West. And it was so funny because somebody had, I ran into one that kind of echoes that statement of like well think about it what do you get for comics in the west it's always superhero crap <laughs> and it's like people are tired of the superhero idea being used over and over again and that's all dc and marvel does is just superheroes yeah guess and it, and it dawned on me i'm like what was the recent comic book that actually got really successful here recently uh uh walking, walking dead. dead yeah and guess what it's not about superheroes <laughs> So look, you can make other stuff and it be successful. Well, no, and and it, and it's funny is there uh what? We're not selling uh comic book heroes. What's our solution? Make them edgy comic book heroes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's just, And and it's funny cuz superheroes does work in Japan. It's just it's not the it's not the sum of the parts. That's the whole point. Like my my hero academia is about superheroes. But guess what? The superheroes isn't the sum of the parts. It's about all the other stuff within it, the struggles, the 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 world itself. It is it is taking this concept and doing something really interesting with it. I just it does it anyway. It's just a too much copy and paste happening in the West, and they need to stop that kind of stuff. So exciting news for Chris's fandom of the Switch. Apparently, my next life as a villainous all routes lead to doom game is going to be launching on the Switch in 2021. So. I don't know that we have any Western releases slated yet, but um, hopefully eventually. Hopefully eventually. May may actually have English options. That sometimes happens with a lot of these visual novels lately. I hope so. So that's, that's cool. Uh, this is really, really, really super exciting. I actually was very surprised by this. And as I read the news on this one, I actually got increasingly excited for it as it got progressively better. Uh, but yeah, apparently G Kids has licensed Hayao Miyazaki's and Nippon Animation's Future Boy Conan. So finally, somebody is going to back to this title that a lot of people uh, say is one of Hayao Miyazaki's greatest uh, creations. 
Um, it is going to be apparently brought to the West, North America, which is exciting. Uh, not only that, not only that, but they are going to be doing a 4K restoration and an English dub for the series, or new English dub anyways. So, yeah, that's uh, that's huge, and I'm I'm super excited for that. I I I I don't know. I don't know. I don't have any references to how good G Kids is for uh, 4K resolution or at least HD res uh, restoration. So maybe somebody can give me some kind of feedback as, you know, they worked on this project and it turned out good or bad. But uh, I hope that they do a solid job on it. But I think something this incredibly uh, huge, uh, this is a really huge grab. Hopefully that gains them, you know, the, to respect the property and do a really good job on it, but I think I th want to say that G Kids have, has done uh, uh, Ghibli stuff before, so they and, and yeah, they've had their title before, yeah. So I I, I know they I'm sure they've they're they're fairly respectful of uh, their stuff, so yeah, it's cool stuff though. Very 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 exciting. Uh, we don't really have any idea of when. Or it's going to be available or anything, but again, if they're going to be doing a restoration, it might take some time. So we'll we'll see. We'll we'll keep you guys posted if, as we learn things. Definitely. Um, this is unfortunate. This is very unfortunate. Um, apparently, according to the Twitter account for Manga Up website, they announced that uh, Kaya Har Haruka's manga adaptation of The Misfit of Demon King Academy uh, will be canceled. And I just learned today that unfortunately he it was being canceled because he was undergoing treatment for pancreatic cancer. And apparently, since I wrote this down, apparently according to today, he has unfortunately has passed away. So that is very unfortunate. The fruit of evolution. Before I knew it, my life had made had it made. <laughs> uh, anime adaptation is set to kick off in October. So there's one that's not going to be put off until 2022 for now, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah. Demon Slayer is getting a new novel on July 16th, and this is going to be, of course, covering the Operation Inf Infiltrate, the Entertainment District arc. Of course, this is the arc that is going to be adapted into an anime here, I think, in fall. I think they have it listed for. Um which is covers the 8th to 11th volume of the manga. And Shuka Matsuda will be writing the novel. Of course, did the Seven Deadly Sins, Seven Scars, They Leave Behind series. So check that out if you're a fan of reading it instead of doing the manga or the anime, I guess. That's, that's like one of those things of like, how many times can you double, triple dip? It's like, oh, we have this manga that's doing really successful. Hey, we're having an adaptation coming for this arc. Hey, let's make a light novel too so that we can sell it again. Uh, how many times are you going to sell the same story? But hey, if it works for them, they'll keep doing it. So congratulations, I guess. Uh, interesting news. Apparently, the Full Metal Alchemist manga is getting a smartphone game. So uh, they said there's more details coming in winter 2021. So later this year, apparently. Um, Square Enix is apparently is the one that's announcing it. So Square Enix will be involved with it. Hopefully it's not just a gotcha game with <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist characters, which it probably will be. Let's be honest. Who wouldn't want a gotcha game with your favorite Alchemist characters? Uh, not me. <laughs> yeah, I was being sarcastic. <laughs> uh, additionally, in Full Metal Alchemist news, uh, additionally, Square Enix monthly Shonen uh, Gangan magazine has announced that Hiro Hiromu Arakawa We'll be launching a new manga soon. So, of course, the creator behind the Full Metal Alchemist series is apparently going to be doing a new manga. So, yeah, and he, and and this is a an excellent uh, writer. He's done she or she's done uh, Full Metal Alchemist and Silver Spoon. I really really love Silver Spoon, um, and of course, like we've mentioned before, we love uh, Full Metal Alchemist. So anything that she does is going to be really wonderful. I can't I can't wait. Yep. Yep. Cool stuff, cool stuff. Uh, let's see here. Kadansha has begun publishing a novel based on the I'm Standing on a Million Lives manga. So there's another double tip for you. <laughs> so if you want to read it rather than watch it or read panels, there you go. Uh, apparently it's going to be an original story, though. So that's not technically double dipping. But uh, 
yeah, it's going to be an original story taking place after the sixth member has joined. Uh, the party is tasked with protecting a village of Zargos from annihilation. To be clear, it's not double dipping yet. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Just wait till it gets adapted. Yeah, yeah. And they'll do a manga, manga adaptation of it. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Uh, this is a weird one. Um, Isekai Quartet apparently is getting a film in 2022. <laughs> I It works for a short format, but I'm not sure if I want to go watch a theatrical screening of chibi characters. <laughs> but I guess there you go. If you want to see a crazy theatrical presentation of this spinoff crossover chibi show. I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. They, they might have some crazy action and animation in there to do it with, so. It makes sense, I guess. It makes sense. All right. Quick run through. We have licenses and streaming rights opening up here. We have Retro Crust is going to be streaming 80 Police uh, to Protect and Serve on July 9th, which technically already happened. Uh, Gravitation on July 16th. Gravitation and Lyrics of Love on July 16th. And Karate Master on July 23rd. Again, if you do appreciate these older titles being available... Support them by going to Retro Crush and actually supporting it. So, uh, Dimpa, uh, Dimpa licenses uh, Renjo Desperado manga to release in winter 2022. Viz Media has licensed Dragon Quest Adventure of Die manga, Alice in Borderland manga, uh, Sakamoto Days manga, Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba, Stories of Water and Flame manga, uh, Ima Koi Now I'm in Love manga, uh, Came the Mirror and Other Tales manga. Deadpool Samurai manga, uh, Pokemon Adventures X and Y manga, Orochi the Perfect Edition manga, Bone Collection manga, Me and Roboco manga, Hard Boiled Cop and Dolphin manga, that's a weird title, <laughs> Mitama Security Spirit Busters manga, Magu Chan God of Destruction manga, Star Wars Tribute to Star Wars book, uh, Jojo 6251, The World of Hiro Hirohiko. Aki, Araki manga, Art of the Tale of Princess Kagaya and Picture Book. Seven Seas has gotten Darling in the Franks manga, My Deer, as in like a deer, an animal deer, <laughs> Friend Nokotan, The Weakest con uh, Contest in All Space and Time manga, Monologue Woven for You, Correspondence from the End of the Universe. It's not just my night, uh, it's just not my night, Tale of the Fallen Vampire Queen. Uh, Until I Meet My Husband, essay, novel, and manga. Survive in Another World with My Mistress, light novel, manga. Five Seconds Before Witch Falls in Love, manga. The Haunted Bookstore, Gateway to a Parallel Universe, manga. And The Girl in the Arcade, manga. <gasps> That's all of them. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. And the last bit of news we have. Nintendo has announced a 7-inch OLED model. Are you excited, Chris? Yes. To a point. <laughs> I have zero interest in this. <laughs> and we talked about it before. It's like this idea of... I, I think everybody's pretty much echoing the same thing right now. Is This was something they had planned to have a new chipset in it. And they just finally decided they didn't want to get involved with the shortages of the chipset. So. And that was my speculation uh, when I first heard about it. It was like... And everybody was immediately on the bandwagon of bashing it. And it was like... Yes, I agree, but at the same time, we are literally go out and try and buy some of the chips, and, and and I guarantee you, you're going to at least be aware that there. If if you can find it, more power to you. But and and some suppliers are trying very hard to maintain their supplies. And that was the thing is like it. it it definitely feels like they put together this package. Like they were going to have a new screen. They're going to have a new dock. They're going to have new size of, of storage. They're going to have this new kickstand, which I really like, by the way, from the, the, like the surface concept. But at the same time, it's like, do you know that they probably seen PlayStation struggling with this Xbox struggling with this? And they're like, we already got all these screens ordered. They've already talked about the fact that they ordered all these screens. You know that they came to a point where they're like, you know, this is not going to clear up anytime soon. There's a lot of speculation that the chipset shortages aren't going to fix itself for another like four or so years. And we need to get this out now. We've bought all these panels. Technology is going to change. We can't keep these panels sitting here. So let's just do it. Let's just make this a basically a screen upgrade, which really does suck. But... <laughs> 
I don't know that I would even touch it. Especially the what's more concerning is the fact that it's it's got a fifty dollar increase, and it's like this doesn't feel like a huge upgrade. This feels like just a a, a simple adjustment of what you currently having to more today's standards. And that's yeah. what kind of bothers me. It, and, it, and it is frustrating because it, in a lot of cases, and, and where where I'm I'm at, I'm in this weird spot right now. Um, I am at. You when when they when they when they did the switch to I'm um, for a lack of a better term that's all I'm going to call it because it wasn't really an upgrade it was they fixed some internal components and 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 made it a little bit uh, more efficient the, more efficient the, the chipset's more efficient and so I didn't get the uh, a replacement then and I'm at this point where uh, especially with like Miku. Um, I, I'm having massive problems playing it on, on the big screen. I can play it just fine in handheld mode. Um, and that sucks because the way that it interfaces with the dock, I don't know even this is going to even improve that. It's just a, it's just a, a fault with how it interfaces with the screen. It's just, you're essentially putting it through two different display cabling systems just to get to the screen. Right. But at the same time, you're, you're, you're doing a little bit better on the screen than I'm, I am. I'm having massive lag problems. And I'm in some some ways that just that little bit, if that's all that it takes to make it a little bit better for me to play my one of my favorite games um, on on console, if, if I can play that just a little bit better, I, that would make me happy. Um, my only other choice is to buy a whole uh, PlayStation, and I really don't want to do that. Um, so it's. I'm I'm in this weird spot where I was kind of hoping to wait for the the Switch Pro um, instead of just upgrading to the quote unquote Switch Two. Grant the reason why I'm saying quote unquote Switch Two is because they didn't actually play that off as a new era. Uh, it's just a new version. And yeah, a new version. They didn't really play that off as a new version. And it's so funny because nobody is talking. They're all saying, well, this is what they should have done in the first place. They don't even talk about that version at all. So that's how um, how much awareness of the second version of the Switch everybody has. Um, so they're considering this the second version. And so I'm in this really stuck place, especially since I have not heard anybody confirm or deny whether or not this OLED has the second chipset or if it's the first chipset they're all talking like it's the first chipset and well, i can't it, see them this, putting the first chipset in when they have the second chipset going right now right the the fact is i think when they did the second version it was technically a lot more cost effective for them as well but because of the battery life yeah the assumption would be that it's going to be the same one as the second version because how are they going to have that kind of battery life with this new model, which was almost like a twice as much increase of, of, of life expectancy? I don't see them going to the old model and somehow being able to pull out twice as much life expectancy yeah. out of just it switching to an OLED. <laughs> right. I don't know. It, I, I think the, the, the thing that, of course, is bugging a lot of people, I, I think myself included, is this aspect that, yeah, technically the biggest hurdle that Nintendo always has is the power capability of them. And my only real huge desire for having the new model have a new processor was because I, I kind of wonder every now and then that the reason why we don't have things like Xenoblade Chronicles X coming to the Switch is because there is still a... There is a, a, a barrier there, obviously, that this model does create. It's, a, it's, a, it's supposed to be mobile. And when you make things mobile, obviously, there's going to be some restrictions there. But you still have, of course, companies like, you know, them getting Witcher out on it obviously says that it can do incredible things as long as you code it properly and you create the engine and you and you make resolutions the way that it needs to be. It can work, but there's still that feeling of limitations there that you don't really want to have there as much as you love it. And of course, the way they get around that is making things very efficient. And unfortunately, most companies aren't very efficient with how they code games, so it doesn't <laughs> work out. Obviously, yeah, Monolith Soth keeps putting a middle finger to everybody whenever they say that, but um, it's still there. I mean, I don't know. I did, I did want a new model, and, that, and that's really just kind of a... The unfortunate thing is I think this is supposed to be a huge step for them because you, you technically do have to take into consideration the 
Switch has been around for about four years or so. Yeah, it's it's, so it's technically getting old, and people I obviously would want something new, but it, it is it is definitely a sign that since I don't think we'll have an, another Switch after this. I think after this point, it's going to go to the next model. They're going, and now they can have the next model that's going to come out. The Switch Two is going to probably have backwards compatibility to the previous gen. They they seem to be very good at that kind of stuff with their handhelds specifically, but also with their home consoles. I mean, you can play Wii games in the Wii U. I think that with as much as they've invested into the Switch, they have something massive, and yeah. they would be almost. It would be almost silly for them to let this go in any way, shape, or form. They have cornered the the concept. Yes, has to continue. Yeah, they, whatever. That's why I said Switch Two. It's got to be another type like this. Yeah, they they they've absolutely dominated the handheld. Uh, there there is no competition as of as I can think of. I I don't even think because Just we know phones. that. Yeah, um, and that's a, that's what they claim with the Vita was why they stepped away from it is because they couldn't compete with phones. And then Switch came out and they said, yeah, you can. <laughs> People still want home gaming console experiences and they don't want a touchscreen specifically for their gaming experience. And then um, on the console, they, like I said before, Nintendo's in their own realm. They're not really competing with the other two. I'm not saying they're not competing. I'm saying they're not really competing. They're doing their own thing. They've always done their own thing. Um, well, since the... Since the, I'd probably say GameCube. But GameCube was a point in which they, well, they technically did their own thing with the cartridges, but that was really them hanging on to that technology. Yeah, they didn't. I would say the GameCube. Um, the GameCube was the first time where it seemed like they were kind of trying to push away from the norms, but obviously the Wii was the point in which they became their own thing. Like we're just doing this. Yeah, and it it was successful. <laughs> it was hugely successful because it translated so well to not just the gaming market. It translated to grandma and grandpa's and QVC and sales were off the chart. They were like, what, over 120 million yeah. consoles? That's insane. And it, it, now I do see some Plus things. moms wanting their children to be active, let's be honest. I do <laughs> see some things that, that kind of concerns me, but I believe that they have it more under control than we probably realize. And I'd like... I, I really wish I was a fly on the wall in their meetings. I really do. Um, well, there's a speculation that Nintendo is too big to fill at this point. But they, eh. they have such a huge, huge war chest. They made so much money on all their previous consoles. Like the Wii U wasn't even a blip for them. They've always been over their sales mar- uh, projections. Well, I'm, I'm actually thinking about their, their marketplace at the moment. Um, I, I think that they're, they're, they're more aware than a lot of companies on... Um, the crash of uh, the 80s. The, yeah. So that's why I say I think they're probably a lot more aware than most companies are of what's going on their their platform. So I that's why I say I would love to be in on their meetings right now on how they're... Because that that is one thing that I am highly concerned about is how much garbage is going on to their platform. And... Mm, yeah. I so in a way because I'm 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 one of those that I I love flipping through my Andrew Andrew's actually made jokes at me before about me flipping through the 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 marketplace just to see what's on there and I do see how much garbage is up on yeah. there um, and so and, yes I'm I think PlayStation did the same thing at some point PlayStation there was this idea of of embracing the indie. And at some point it got to the point where there was just so much garbage popping up that you just couldn't, there was no way to curate it. Yeah. Because that, like, and it's funny because the argument completely turns to, well, Nintendo's a curate. Well, the PlayStation needs to curate. It's like, no, they can't. Like, it's literally impossible to curate so much crap they're throwing on there. Yeah. Because they want to support the indies. And what ends up turning into is that people take advantage of the concept of what an indie is and they go, well, then I can make a stupid game where you uh, throw a can at a goat. And that's all the game is, is you literally throw a can at a goat and he goes, bye. And then it's, it's $5. How do you curate that much stuff? You can't, you have to plug the hole. You got to stop bringing garbage into it. Yeah. You got to have standards for what you expect the game to be. Otherwise you're just going to have people, Either it's a YouTuber that wants to get laughs out of people by buying stupid games, or it's somebody that buys it thinking it's something it's not. 
Yeah, and that that's why I was I was saying I I would love to be in on their 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 meetings right now because there's got to be at some point they're going to have to put a clamp down on this. And then everybody's going to whine that Nintendo doesn't allow indies. And yeah. it's, and that's, it sucks, but they're, they're not they're not disallowing indies. They're just allowing disallowing garbage. Garbage. At, at some point, there's got to have to be a fix for this because it is getting really, really bad. Some of that stuff is looks horrid. Yeah. And it's like, why are you why are you here i i mean i even made a joke about uh it was sad because they've had points where they've had ripoffs of their own titles on there i think there was a there was a zelda Breath of the wild clone that was on there at some point was, oh really was terrific yeah and they they apparently didn't even see it like i said it's like are you guys even seeing what you're putting on yeah. here like i'm waiting for the time that something like extremely offensive or pornographic just ends up on there and they go oh crap oops <laughs> Who let this one through? And, and and that's the thing is I I, I was I was poking. It was that it was a time which that guy had that you know the bird that has the liquid and it kind of it tilts over and over again and yeah. they put that next to the keyboard so it keeps hitting the key as it as it as it flexes down. <laughs> this is the, some guy just fell asleep and just let it pass 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 and then he wakes up finally and goes okay I guess you get back to work and actually looking at these. Um, I, I was, uh, I was poking fun at Andrew because there was this weird one that was something about a, a dragon loan officer or tax, uh, preparer or something like that. But it, it had this dragon girl that had the heterochromia eyes and I, I poked, poked fun at Andrew and, and sent it to him. Oh, your next favorite show is on. It looks horrid. <laughs> um, th- and that's what, what I thought would be funny, uh, if Andrew was to actually look at it, but. Other than that, it's I don't understand how some of this stuff is getting on there. I really don't. Yes, that's kind of the problem with getting too big. <laughs> but I'll still I, I think it's funny because it's like I, I've, I've gotten to the point now where I almost want to fully 100 percent support Nintendo just because of the fact that they don't. Again, this is this aspect of competition, the fact that they don't. <laughs> I think I joked with you a couple day or a couple weeks ago and the idea of like if you told myself, you know, 10 years ago, told myself hey, you know the only place that you can play games that are not, you know, horrifically censored is Nintendo platform. Yeah. I'd laugh at your face because yep. it used to be Nintendo was the family console. No bad stuff here at all. It was it was shocking that Call of Duty ended up on the Wii. It was like, this was the only thing they allowed on there that was like decently, well, also like uh, I think Manhunt and stuff was like these really weird, oddball, hyper-violent games would somehow end up on there. But for the most part, it was... It was allowed. It wasn't allowed. I mean, and Sony was the platform that was like, yeah, come on, Cinema Kagura. Come on, all these, you know, etchy titles. I mean, Vita was a haven for a lot of those titles. And then suddenly on nowhere, Switch happened. And I think supporting that fact that they just don't prevent that kind of stuff is important. But yeah, there is. You, you want some effort put into the games. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. Some effort. It is. It, it is a catch 22. I, you're you're darned if you do darned if you don't but it is what it is and i i love nintendo like you were saying the only one who's not actually doing uh any censoring and that's probably you're just gonna have to take the bad with the good yeah yeah you don't have to <laughs> mm-hmm. um that's 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 it for all of our news though that's that's everything i think we have a time for let's let's i have to do at least one question I know that we're kind of running on long time here, but we have a question from, uh, let's see here. How do you say this? Oh, oh, I get you, uh, it. Yeah, I seen I it. I seen it, it before. I, I'm, I'm I surprised you didn't it. catch it. I was too busy looking at my phone because I have to bring up an answer <laughs> to the question. I looked at the question before the name. Um, Definitely not backwards bacon chips. That's all I'll say is, is the name. Uh, it's Spich. No Cobb uh, says, what are some of your guys' favorite anime movies that aren't Studio Ghibli? Also, have you guys seen I Want to Eat Your Pancreas yet? No, I told Chris the other day that we still need to watch that. It's been sitting on my shelf. I bought it a long time ago. Well, it was before the move. Um, we were planning on watching it, and I failed miserably at having us watch it. So it's, it's still sitting there. But I do want to really badly watch that one. Um, I don't think Chris will want to watch it just because it's it's gonna be depressing. You know it's gonna be depressing. I don't know. I actually 
honestly, yeah, technically some of my favorite films of all time are going to be Ghibli, Spirited Away. Princess Mononoke is technically is my my favorite of Studio Ghibli. I don't know why. I, I acknowledge that I think Spirited Away is technically a better movie, but I just have always personally loved uh, Princess Mononoke, like personally. So outside of those ones, um, A Silent Voice obviously was was amazing. I'm not as hyper over the top about your name, but I do agree that it was a really good film. Why Wolf Kids. The... Wolf Kids is still probably one Wolf of my Wolf Kids, favorites. yes. Wolf Kids was an amazing sh- uh, movie. If you guys Wolf, have never watched Wolf, Wolf Kids, Children? Children? definitely go watch Wolf Kids. Um, I really like the part where the Wolf Kids um, were Wolf Kids, <laughs> and uh, the mother was very upset about them being Wolf Kids. No, she was actually pretty supportive of them being Wolf Kids. Uh, but yeah, Wolf Kids, definitely... Definitely check out that one. It's well, Wolf is Children. It Wolf Children? Okay. It's Wolf Children. Yeah, I, I I really did like Wolf. I Children. can't read it. It's it's I can barely read it from right here. I, oh, you're looking at the book. I'm like, why is it over there? It's not supposed to be over there. Why can I not organize my list as movies? See, we don't have internet right now, so I'm trying to pull up my phone and I'm trying to pull it up. And the, apparently, the mobile version of my Miami list is terrible. So. It's just too personal hotspot, even though it sets my phone on fire. It's like a really bad day to record. We have a storm outside. Dog. I don't know if you guys have heard any panting in the background. It's going to be a dog. It's not me uh, <laughs> having issues or anything like that. Um, we have internet has been terrible. They're trying to fix it. And I've been having to run everything off my hotspot. It's just a, just a bad day in general to record things, apparently. Okay, so my ambulance is pulled up. Let's see what I have for films. Oh, yeah. Ghost in the Shill, obviously. Um, probably one of the greatest films of all time. Grave of the Fireflies, technically. Oh, that's Ooh, that yeah. Is, that, that is just I was actually I was actually going to say Princess Kaguya, and his other one would be uh, Grave of Fireflies. That was a wonderful, fantastic movie. Yeah, I wasn't as huge on the Kaguya, but I do, I do appreciate it um, for what it is. Yeah, Wolf Children's up there on my list, obviously. Let's see. Again, Silent Voice is definitely amazing. But it, it's funny because it's technically with a Silent Voice, I, I already love the franchise. So it's like how much of that does technically play into it? But I mean, Kyoto Animation, what can you expect they're going to pull it off? Even though I would have appreciated that being a TV series instead, it was still it was still absolutely Yeah, it fantastic. was a fantastic movie. Uh, the Kizu Monogatari movies were, were fantastic. Definitely up there. Akira, yeah, that's technically uh, one of those best films of all time. I'm I'm trying to find something that's out of the norm. I know Akira and all those are really kind of givens. I can tell you a movie not to watch. Air movie. Mm-hmm. Just watch the TV series. The air movie was not a good adaptation of that story. <laughs> it's not that the story's bad. It's just having it in a film was not good. Technically, the Madoka Magica movie series was essentially what made me fall in love with Madoka Magica. I did not like the TV's pacing um but the three movies was really really what pretty much made me fall in love with that with that particular property so that's a good one even though again it's another given one well i just seen um i'm seeing tv shows going by so you're not in film anymore well this is by rating girl who left her time was was great again that's another easy yeah pretty much anything by um who did the feet and uh movie yeah, anything Satoshi Kon is going to be amazing. The Feet movie. Yeah. Is that is that from the same maker of Wolf Kids? Mm-mm. That's Mamoru Hosoda. It was a joke. I'm making fun of the fact that you're being very vague with stuff. The one where the, the kid and his there's teacher... A, there's one that's kind of out of the norm. I did like Panama Inverted. That was a... It's one that I didn't really hear too many too much talk about, and I did enjoy that one. Was was uh, your name the the same guy? The one where the the teacher and the kid uh, kept meeting during the rainstorms. Yeah. He does. He does. Yeah. He does highly, highly detailed artwork. Is really what he is uh, really amazing for. Is he just goes all out when he does his. I I don't think it's the guy who does uh, your name, but I could be wrong. Yeah, Mamoru Hosoda does the girl who left the time. Summer Wars, Wolf Children, Boy and the Beast, Mirai and Bill. I don't know. Do I have the foot show? What's the foot show called? I don't think. I'm I looking know. it up. I'm trying to figure it out. I think actually it is. 
Garden of Words Garden is the name of, of it. Yeah. Isn't that five centimeters per second, guys? Okay. Uh, Shinkai. Yeah. Koto Shinkai? Uh-huh. Yeah, mix on his stuff. And, it, well, like I said, most of... I've always been mixed on his stuff as well, but his 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 real claim to fame is his attention to detail. Like feet. Yes, like feet. <laughs> and, and Attention leaves. to feet. He, he pays way too much attention to the inner workings of leaves. See, so, I'm yeah, Kanto Shinkai's Voice of a Distant Star. I kind of want to keep watching that one. Five centimeters per second, of course, but he's mostly known for your name. Um, I need to watch Weathering uh, with You still. Uh, no, I'm thinking of Fireworks. Weathering with You, I think, is coming out soon. No, it's already out. Hmm. That one snuck by me. So much stuff to keep track of. She and her cat, I think, was what really kind of put him on the map for me. Because that was a really simple but cool story. Of course, five centimeters per second, obviously, is huge as well. I feel like I'm missing something really huge. Of course, that always happens with this kind of stuff. I was thinking about colorful, but um, that one is one that, if I remember right, that's the the one where they were talking about a dark subject, right? Yeah. That one was a little bit. You're you're gonna have to be aware of what it's talking about if you're not if you're not if you're sensitive to that. But other other than that, I thought it was a very good character uh, exploration. Jinro was good. Kind of depressing at the same time, but it's good. <laughs> I like the Mardok Scramble series, but it's not like amazing, but I did like it. Kind of a really cool sci-fi-ish type of movie. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. I'll, like I said, I'll probably remember something later on and kick myself in the butt over it. <laughs> but uh, I'll give you some ideas, some good movies. Hathaway movie was pretty good. I'm, Of course, I'm kind of wanting the other movies to come out. Uh they're technically OVAs, but I really like the Gundam Origin movies. Those are really incredible. So, yep. That's it. Uh, we have two questions for our next episode. So, again, a call out to people to get some questions in so that we can do those. But, uh, as always, hope you guys enjoyed our run-through of the news. That seems interesting to us. That should be interesting to you because it's interesting to us. Um, as always, we appreciate all of our Patreon supporters, all those who support us through verbally, letting other people know about us, and all that good stuff, and those that support our YouTube channel. I think we just hit 40 or 4,000 subscribers here recently, and we're getting up to 4,100, so definitely, if you guys support us there, it would definitely be appreciated. Uh, but yeah, we're going to call it now because the dog is going crazy because there's a storm outside, and uh, it's been a while, so hope you all enjoyed, and as always, y'all take care. Boost. If you look into this, I'm curious what your thoughts are on this one. He just walks away. I ask a question, he just walks away. <laughs>